that's right, it's Wanda time. Now, I did multiple of these runs with Wanda, and the first one happened to be the fastest one. Also, it was the run that I didn't die on, but we'll get to that later. So the world settings are small forest to medium caves. My client mods are just a free up user interface and silence annoying sounds. And we have one server mod called Epic Health Bar. This will just show all of the boss's health while I'm fighting them, so you can see how much HP they have and stuff. Anyway, the runs began. So early days, we want twigs, grass, flint, and carrots, and I'm also picking up seeds. Now, while the early days of the run is playing in the background, let's talk about Wanda and what she does. Wanda is not like any other normal character. Instead of having a health meter, she has an age meter. So she naturally ages one year every 40 seconds. And the only way to heal her age is by using her ageless watch, which you start with one. This ageless watch reverses your age by eight years and has a two minute cooldown. Now in two minutes, you only naturally age by three years. So if you spammed on cooldown, you would have an extra five years of damage you could take. Speaking of damage, let's see how it's calculated. So Wanda does still take damage, but when she does take damage, it gets added to her age. If she were to take 100 damage, she would age 40 years. Her minimum age is 20 and her maximum age is 80. Once she hits 80 age, she dies. What this effectively means is she has a max health of 150. She also has a crafting tab, but we're going to talk about that when we actually get to it in the run. Anyway, so I've been collecting a bunch of materials and now we're in the swamp and I am insane. So the route for Wanda is slightly different than Wolfgang because I need her weapon. That's right, Wanda can craft her very own weapon. This requires a shadow manipulator, hence why I'm chopping down a living tree so I can get uh, the living logs for the shadow manipulator. Also, I'm going insane because I want basically a stack of nightmare fuel, so 40 nightmare fuel, to make my weapon the shadow manipulator and all that. Oh, we got the blue gem. Nice. To get an early game shadow manipulator, you basically need to dig up graves to get a blue gem and a red gem, because then you can combine them into a purple gem, which you need for the shadow manipulator. So we stole some rabbits' lives, the prototype to press the hat at here, but we didn't place it yet. And then I went to the dragonfly desert and I found a tree guard set piece, which has a minor hat and a bunch of tree guards, so there's all the living logs I'm gonna need. Would you looky here, we found the uh, shadow pieces set piece. Anyway, let's make that purple gem, make a shadow manipulator, and we're gonna start basing. Now you're gonna see I only have a singular crock pot <laughs> and that's because since I can't heal with food I really don't have any use to make crock pot foods and there I just made my weapon now I'm gonna take a second to explain this weapon one thing I skipped over earlier Wanda does more damage with shadow weapons the older she is and the most damage she does is when she's between age 65 and 79 so you know if you're being a bit risky you can stay old to do more damage but you're but if you get hit you might die since you're effectively lower health. This weapon counts as a whip, so it attacks slightly slower, but it has extra range, so it kind of makes up for it. And when Wanda is old with her weapon, she does 142.8 damage per hit. That's almost as good as Wolfgang's DPS. So now that you understand, she's basically a glass cannon character. The lower your health, the more damage she can potentially do. But there is a way to circumvent this risk, and that's just by using really good armor. So during this run, I'm going to be using night armor for the majority of it. And as you can see, we're currently heading to the ruins, and I'm using night Night armor. Night armor gives you 95% damage reduction and all you need is papyrus and nightmare fuel. So it's pretty cheap to make and 95% damage reduction is just such a ridiculous amount that you can just stay old the entire time with very little risk. Because if you took 100 damage, the armor would absorb 95 of that damage and you would only get hit for 5 damage, which is only 2 age. Anyway, if you hadn't noticed already, we're in the ruins! Because an early ruins rush with Wanda is basically 100% needed. Please just watch and observe this damage. Half an age each attack. <laughs> Look at the damage she does! <laughs> it's so stupid. Anyway, while Wanda is old, she does work less efficiently, so I uh, use my watch to get back to being middle-aged so that I can start hammering clockworks and stuff. Because, so every single one of Wanda's watches requires timepieces. To make timepieces, you need Thulsite fragments and nightmare fuel. So we're down here because we need lots of fragments to make lots of timepieces so that we can have lots of watches. Now when you join the game with Wanda, you start with three timepieces. This is enough to make her weapon, but that's it. So we slaughter, we mine, we mine some more. Then we hammer down some broken stations for some extra Thulsite and get this gold garden spitters. Usually these spiders 
are really annoying, but you know, Wanda just does too much damage, so she can't be killed. <laughs> when you hammer down these broken stations, you always get two soul sight, but you also have a small chance of getting like a random ruins item, like a lazy explorer. It's very rare, but you know, it could happen. Unfortunately, it didn't happen this time. Goodness me, a surprise bishop. Now, one rule I go by is if you're always wearing armor, you cannot die. This is like pretty much, very much true for Wanda. Anyway, we find Ancient Guardian, we cheese the heck out of him because I am Wanda and I can do that. And we get some Thule Sight in the chest, that's pretty decent actually. And we had him run over some Thule Sight walls so that we could get some more Thule Sight fragments. Oh, a green gem. I can't pass that up. Yum, yum, yum. Anyway, crafting time. So what I need is a construction amulet, a deconstruction staff, a star cooler staff, and more full sight crowns is pretty meant necessary with Wanda because I want the good armor, the good damage reduction. A magic luminescence, of course. We're going to spend the rest of the full sight on full sight walls. This way we can hammer them to get more fragments. I'm about to leave and I mistakenly leave the ancient key in the chest, which is really annoying because that means when I have to get the ancient key later, I'll have to come back to the ruins. Wait, this is a triple mac. Oh, I d there is a triple mac dust biome. I see. So I went up the wrong cave entrance, but that was good because I ended up finding a triple mac dust biome. Triple mac dust is extremely important for Wanda because her, one of her most powerful watches allows her to teleport anywhere on the map or in the caves from anywhere else, as long as she has the watch on her. So this watch is insanely powerful, but it requires one mac tusk two gold and two time pieces. So I can't make it until winter and even then I need a Mac Tusk for every one that I want to make. Anyway, I make a bunch of life watches so that I can heal if I need to. I pick some cactus because we're about to prepare for dragonfly. So normally I don't use the wall method, but since Wanda is so delicate, I can tank physical attacks because I have armor to reduce the damage, but I cannot reduce damage from uh, damage over time damage, such as being set on fire, which is what the larvae in the dragonfly fight do. Whoa, what the heck did I just do there? Wanda can also make a watch called a back step watch, which teleports you back a few steps. But it also has invulnerability frames, so if I use it at the right time, I can dodge any attack. So the easiest way to die as Wanda is overheating, freezing, or being set on fire. Since damage is applied over time, and your healing is also applied over time, if I get set on fire, then I try to heal with one of my watches, the healing will just get cancelled and I'll continue to take damage. So being set on fire will probably kill me, but yeah, let's so let's just see how this fight pans out. We've now entered the first larvae phase. I am I am <laughs> booking it behind my wall because I don't want to deal with the larvae. <laughs> so if a larvae gets too close to you, they set you on fire, which means they ignore my damage reduction and deal damage over time to me. And like I said, while I'm receiving damage over time, I cannot heal. So <laughs> being set on fire as wonder is a big oopsie whoopsie because you'll probably die. As well, only if you're old. You'll notice that I'm also trying to keep a fair distance away from the lava pond and the fires because if I start over overheating that also is damage over time. Overheating damage does 1.25 damage per second and your armor doesn't reduce the damage so uh, yeah. And as you can see I use my ageless watch because I hit age 73. If I constantly want to be old I need to be age 65 or older and since the ageless watch heals for 8 years I just use it whenever I hit 73 age or more. That way I'm constantly doing the best damage that I can. Anyway Dragonfly got enraged I pan tooted him back to sleep to get him out of the enrage and the fight continues as as normal. Also, please ignore me being terrible with the back step watch. I keep messing up. Uh oh. Now this is very unlikely to happen, but as Dragonfly entered his larvae phase, he decided to put two larvae on the same side of the pool that I'm on, and I got set on fire. Ah! So I quickly use my ageless watch to make sure I don't die, and then I get set on fire again! Look at my age ticking up! I'm at age 75 and a half, oh goodness! If you recall, I die if I hit age 80. That was a close one. So that whole time I was trying not to get on f set on fire too much while trying to kill the larvae. Again, that was super unlikely. Dragonfly can spawn a larvae from any of his six pools, and he happened to do it twice in a row at the pool that I was next to the first time. Anyway, let the fight continue. Easy. Damn it, the red gym landed in the ocean. 
I can't get to it. I'm sorry, Buffalo. Daddy needs some Beefalo first so that I can make a saddle. Come with me, angry Beefalo. You are my pet now. Jakey slaughtering Beefalo and then taking one in for his own? It must mean it's time to move the shadow pieces. So we found the set piece and two of the statue pieces when we were exploring, but we didn't find the bishop yet. But luckily, I find the bishop after only like two days of exploring. So I put them all in place and I head back to Dragonfly and like follow them. I can't even get to any of that. <sighs> so I guess there's no scaled furnace for me, which is actually kind of a big deal because I don't have an infinite heat source at my base now. But whatever, I gave up on that. Let's go kill some Macdusk. So I went down the sinkhole next to my base because that leads to another sinkhole which comes to the triple Macdust biome. So that's faster than actually just running here. This is actually kind of noteworthy because if you don't have any good wormholes in your world, the caves can kind of act as wormholes sometimes if there's two cave exits near each other. And we kill three of the Macdusks and we get two Tuskhorns. So let's head right on back to base, make ourselves a walking cane because speed bonus is good and we're not going to make our watch yet because it's time to kill the shadow pieces. Now this was kind of reckless of me but as you can see, I'm insane when I'm starting this fight, and since Wander is delicate, if I get chomped by a level 3 rook while I get hit by a Terra Beak, that would leave me on pretty dangerously low HP. But whatever, let's go. So I kill the knight first, of course, and so for Wanda, you could kill a level 3 rook or a level 3 bishop. They're both kind of similar difficulty if you're using the backstep watch. So since the backstep watch gives you iframes and teleports you a little bit further away, you can avoid the bishop, but it's risky. If you mess up the timing, you'll get obliterated. Same thing with the rook if you mess up the timing with the back step watch with the rook you'll get chomped by the rook and he does 165 damage per bite so i went for the slightly more consistent option of just using lots of speed bonus this means i can kite the rook but the bishop will always get one or two hits on me which isn't too bad so i have to use my life watches occasionally but my main focus is dodging that rook the bishop is down the level three rook has come out to play so yeah, um, if, now if this guy hits me, he won't quite kill me in one hit with a with a full sight crown, but like he'll get me really, really close to dying. So um, let's just not get hit. Finishing the fight middle age. What am I? Some kind of noob healing too early? But anyway, I think I'll get hit once by the rook, but uh, it's fine. Immediately putting down more stars. What the heck? So yeah, I am. Um, so let's prepare for Bee Queen. I grabbed more armor, a beekeeper hat, grabbed some cactus so that I don't go insane during the fight, and we're gonna start the fight against Bee Queen. Now, the method against Bee Queen with Wanda is basically the same as Wolfgang, except you just have to be extra careful about your health. Because if you start to heal with your watch, it takes like two seconds for your heal to actually fully go through. So if I get poked by a bee, like while my heal is still healing me, it will cancel the heal and then deal damage to me. So after using my watch, I have to run away from all the bees to make sure the heal actually goes through. As you can see, I'm using a beekeeper hat and knight armor. The knight armor gives you the 95% damage reduction and the beekeeper hat has loads of durability. So it will make it so that I use less knight armor basically. And the reason I'm not using solely a beekeeper hat is because the beekeeper hat only has 80% damage reduction, which I would just take way too much damage if I just Used to beaky bat. Anyway, first phase we kill all but one Grumble Bee, face tank everything else, and we're on to the second phase pretty damn fast. Second phase, she spawns two rounds of Grumble Bees, and I cannot just kill them because she'll just spawn more. So we're gonna keep putting them to sleep, constantly checking our rage to make sure that we're not older than age 73, and then we're just gonna hit Bee Queen and keep putting them to sleep. Now, I want you to watch what's about to happen next and tell me what could go wrong. Could you tell? Well, theoretically, I have enough uh, speed bonus to just run away from the Grumblebees without them hitting me. But during this time that I'm running away from the Grumblebees, I'm only wearing a beekeeper hat and not knight armor. So I only have 80% damage reduction, which means 20% of the damage goes straight to my face, which is a whole lot. So if I get poked by multiple Grumblebees while I'm running away, I could potentially die. So this is the riskiest part of the fight, simply because I just lose a bunch of damage reduction. But otherwise, we wait for Bee Queen to scream, the Grumblebees chase me, I put on the mags so that I move faster, I run away, then turn around last second, put them to sleep, and then face tank Bee Queen. Then 
after she runs away, I have to quickly use my watch to heal before the Grumblebees charge at me again. Now the fight gets a little bit more complicated, because as you could see, I ran the bees a little bit too far away. We know this because Bee Queen just spawned another batch of bees. That means there's a batch of normal bees just flying around somewhere to the left, and these bees will no longer obey Bee Queen. Basically, they're completely desynced from the fight and they could potentially mess things up. But we've just entered the last phase. The last phase is the same as the previous phase, except Bee Queen will scream more often. So after I'm done attacking Bee Queen, I really do not have a lot of time to use my watch before the bees will come charging at me again. And that's the game. I only used one beekeeper hat, not two. Sit down, bee queen. Wanda is the real queen of the constant. Now, bundling wrap is cool and all, but like, I'm not making food and then keeping it. I'm just chugging raw meat for Wanda because she doesn't heal off of crockpot foods. So we'll use bundling wraps later when we're preparing for like moonstorm events and stuff. But otherwise, we're not using it for a long time. Give me gold, pig boy. And look at this beautiful backtrack watch we're about to make. Mmm. This is the watch that can teleport us across the map. This watch, we're just gonna set the anchor point to our base. Wherever we are in the world, we can just use this to get back to our base. Now, I'm pretty sure if you only have one or two watches, this is the most efficient use for those one or two watches. Since the watch is always useful because you can just use it to get back to your base. Anyway, we found the deer, bonked them into a tree, and then we found claws. Now, let's start killing. Because I like to show every character's perks in their uh, boss run video, watch how easy claws is if you're using Wanda. Capped skill. Oh, are you ready? I don't think you're ready for this. Hold on. Wait, Claws, can you just, like, stay there real quick? Look at this skill! I am so good at the game! Oh! You cannot comprehend my skill! <laughs> it's so stupid! Oh, he's slipping around the sack. That's not allowed. Ah, oh, Krampi, I see. Uh, play the pan flute, please. Oh no, how- um, Claws, I did not say that you could exit the sack. Please, come back here. Good Claws. Hold on, I need to heal. One second. No, no slipping around the edges. Bad Claws here. Yeah. Good Claws. Oh no, I'm insane. Wait, Claws, hold on. I I'm insane real quick. Um, go to sleep. Ah, go to sleep. Eh? I told you to go to sleep. Gosh darn it. He's not listening to me. Wait, hold on, close. I told you, I'm insane. I just need it. All right, now let's get behind your sack, young man. All right, good boy. Look at a handsome lad doing what he's told. Good boy. Just stay right there. Yep, yep, no problem. No bedtime tantrums, claws. It's time to go to sleep. Oh my goodness. My skill is unmatched. Did you see that, guys? He didn't even cast a spell. I didn't even get hit. I'm just so good at the game. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. I, I'm sorry. So sorry, in case you missed it, the what the range on Wanda's weapon allows you to just sit behind the claws sack, which is an indestructible object, and you can just safe spot claws for the entire fight. Anyway, let's use that watch rather than running back to base. Oof. Hua. Hey, oh, an eyeball. No way, a blue fun cat blueprint. And we have a life-giving outlet in case I die, which is like kind of a possibility. Give me your tusk, tusky man. So this is the point of the run where I wasn't sure how many uh, tusks I actually wanted. Because I think I want like maybe two or three teleports. But after that, it's not really worth farming for them. That is not a sound you want to hear while you're playing Wanda. It's fine, emergency torch to the rescue. What the? I killed like four of these boys and I didn't get any tusks. Well, I'm gonna try my luck at the goats. Because I forget, I haven't even farmed the goats once yet. Um, and I kind of need a lot of Volt Goat Horns for weather pains for the future boss battles. Now let's put our deconstruction staff to use and deconstruct two of my pan flutes to get the mandrakes back. This way, I can make two more pan flutes after I pick some reeds. Goodness gracious, what the heck is that coming from the sky? So it's time for the next boss battle. And now I could dodge the twins. Or you can just spam the pan flutes and keep putting them to sleep while I'm just damaging them. Now, since I'm so delicate because I'm playing Wanda, I really don't want to risk getting hit by either of the twins. They couldn't one-hit me, but once they enter phase two, the uh, the green twin gets really, 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 really dangerous. Because he dashes so fast, and if I get hit like two or three times in a row, then um, yeah, it's kind of GG. Thank you. 
Now, because I had the night armor, I was completely fine. But as you can see, uh, it's pretty hard to dodge uh, the green twin when you don't have a mag. And if I put on a mag, I wouldn't have as much damage reduction. So, uh, yeah. So now we definitely have to keep them asleep. You could totally do that in one night, easy. So I didn't quite manage to kill the last twin in one night, which you totally could, I just wasn't very fast. Skipping to the next night, we summoned him, but then... Alright, death time. Oh dear, Colt is coming! I can hear him! Uh-oh! Resonator, it's time to die. No bad Resonator. Dear, Colt is coming, don't you understand? Goodness me, ah, uh, what a mess. Die, silly Resonator. Can you, can you hear him? Dear Clops is coming! Run away! What the heck? Oh, yeah, here he comes. Oopsie daisy. I went a tad too close. Oh no, the beefalo! What are we gonna do? The beefalo are about to get shredded by Dear Clops! You'll notice that I didn't chop down any dead trees because I don't need living logs as wonder uh, in the first part of winter. But that also means I don't have any pine cones to plant for deer to run over. So, uh, after deer clops obliterates all of these beefalo in this little forest, I let him run over some trees because I do need some wood at some point. And then I kill him! Ah. Uh. All right, it's a full moon. Um, we didn't get Glamour on day 11 because we were in the ruins. So let's transform Chester into Shadow Chester. Glamour, quick, the pigmen are evil. Ah, uh, run, Glamour, and fresh new Chester. Attack the buffaloes. Get them, tall birds. Good job, tall birds, I'm proud. Ah. Uh. Wow, another task. This teleport gets more and more satisfying to use. Anyway, so we're going to make an extra uh, backtrack watch, and we're also going to set this one to the base. This way, when I teleport back to with one of the watches, I can quickly grab the other one so that I don't have to wait for the cooldown to reset. So we're going to throw down a lightning rod because spring is coming, and then we're going to do a little bit of gardening so that we can get some twigs and grass uh, for the rest of the run. And let's prepare for sea travel with some boats, some boat patches, and some oars. Okay, chat, yes. time to test your knowledge, see if you've learned from me. Tell me. Where is the Lunar Island? Is it A, in this gap up here? Is it B, in this gap over here? Is it C, in this gap here? Or is it D, next to the oasis over here in this gap? Oh no, so many of you said D. I'm disappointed, I'm disappointed. Look guys, look. There's a big cut there and a big cut here. It's obviously over here. After being thoroughly disappointed with my Twitch chat, we make our boat and we start paddling our way back to where the Lunar Island, I think it is at least. And hey look, we found the Lunar Island. It's almost as if I was right. Anyway, so go to the Lunar Island and grab two moon glass shards for later. I found a bottle and then it's over there. Ugh. So yeah, it was on the other side of the map. That made me kind of sad. But I didn't find any driftwood, so I uh, do some chopping to get some driftwood. Then Chester keeps inviting his friends onto the boat. So I kill him, and then we're back. Spring has started, and I haven't made my umbrella yet. But while I'm gathering a bone shards, I'm going to kill some goats. And then, hey, look, a suspicious dirt pile. Let's follow it and see if we can spawn in a goat. And we did! So if it's during spring and it's raining and your uh, suspicious dirt power ends in the desert, it has, it, instead of spawning a koala elephant, it will spawn a volgo. Anyway, umbrella acquired, bees have been destroyed, and we have made ourselves a nice driftwood ore. Then we're going to collect some mushrooms because we need to make some lures so that we can catch some fish to potentially spawn Malbatross, the next boss. So I make another boat on the other side of the road and I start paddling towards Pearl. So let's do some tasks. Let's hang up some dried bull kelp, kill the lure plan and then it's not raining so unfortunately I cannot give her the umbrella yet. But now what I should have done is I should have set a backtrack watch to teleport back to this island but I forgot to so uh, we didn't do that. But anyway we found a massive horde of cookie cutters so after one round of killing this massive horde, I ended up with like 13 cookie cutter shells. I just needed 10. So yeah, uh, we're done here. But ain't that convenient. It started raining. Here you go, bro. I'll have an umbrella. Oh, oh, I found one. I'm so smart. Malpatross spawner has been located, so I start catching some fish. And the second fish that I hook... Oh, what is this? Oh, I found Malpatross. Oh, I'm scared. Ah. Malpatross, please, you're scaring me. Alright, how quickly will you die? Chester might also die. That's a problem. I guess it's gaming time. Hello. 
Wait, you pushed my boat so far. What? How? What? How did she push my boat so far? Did they fix it? She never used to push it that far. Whatever. I have range. Don't die, Chester. Malbatros is nearly dead. Oh my goodness! Look at- Is this bugged? Did you see- We're traveling at supersonic speeds! Holy moly! Look how far she pushed me! That was crazy! Alright, we're heading back. I'm not done with you, Malbatros. Oh, hold on. We have, a uh, Wavy Jones. And some shadow creatures. Alright, Malbatros, fight me. Don't you dare push me away again. Get your booty back here! Make him come in real close. Stupid bird! Alright, that's probably the fastest I've ever- well, that's the first time that I found Malbatros, fished, spawned her on the first try, and then, like, killed her without any anything messing up. So overall, a pretty good kill! Didn't have to make multiple trips to kill Malbatros, so back to killing some goats because I still need more vocal horns. And speaking of killing big birds, it's time to kill some mooskus because I need their feathers that they drop. And so here's a little a sneaky trick you can do. If it's nighttime, the babies and the mother goes to sleep, so you can just, like, kill them during their sleep. TLDR, there's multiple mooskus and babies that spawn across the map, and so I killed them all for all their feathers. Alright, let's go. Sorry, I don't know what kiting is. I'm a wonder main. I have too much range. Got a frog brain, so that drove me right into the cave because now it is that time when we need to explore the caves to find toadstool, fuel weaver, and get eight whole lot of fossils. Which you can get from mining these uh, these rocks with spider nests in them. Oh my goodness, a mole worm. Die, mole worm, I'm sorry. Yummy. Oh, it's the atrium. Nice. nice! So anyway, I didn't find Toadstool, but we're gonna go back to the surface because, you know, it's day 50, and on day 51 we need to do the Moonstone event to get that Mooncaller staff. So we're gonna surround the rock with walls and then put some fossils in front so that the uh, where pigs and hounds get stuck on the front of the, uh, the fossils. So here I'm just holding F to see how many of these things actually spawn, and by the end of the Moonstone event, no other pigs and hounds spawned. So now I'm thinking, is there a cap at how many hounds and uh, where pigs that the event can actually spawn? Anyway, Anyway, teleport back to base, grab some reeds, and we're heading back into the caves. Because it's time to kill Fuel Weaver. Except, wait a second, I'm stupid and left the ancient key in the ruins, didn't I? So, um, usually I bring that back with me, but you know, I forgot. So now I have to go back. As you can see right here, if you're being chased by monkeys, you can use clockwork rooks to ram through them, and they will one-hit them. So, you yeah, know, thanks, rook. Destroyed most of the monkeys for me. We obliterate the rest of the monkeys ourselves, because we have range with our weapon. Then we're gonna snag the ancient key and head over to Fuel Weaver. how easy it is to traverse this area. Just put on the Nightmare Amulet, just slip on through and don't get hit by any clockworks. Anyway, we've arrived. Throughout this fight, when Fuel Weaver does his attacks, I will explain them. So his first attack there is he slams the ground to summon some bones from above. Then he has a basic melee attack, which you can dodge. And then a bone cage attack, which traps you in a cage of bones. Now normally you'd have to use the lazy explorer to teleport out of there, but since I have the back step watch, I could just use that to get out of there. So that's what I'm gonna do. And now we have entered phase two. Phase two is where the real work begins. So two new attacks. He summons these shadow hands that you have to be insane to break around the arena. And if you do not break them, he you cannot damage the Agent Fuel Weaver. Then another attack where he summons a bunch of minions and each of them will heal him for a lot of health. Unless I kill the minions before they get to him. So I'm using the Weather Pane because the Weather Pane hits lots of times. And so it would destroy a lot of minions in a small area. Otherwise I can just run around the arena and hit them with my Walking Cane because they only have one HP.
That was very clean. I don't think he healed once, so that was very clean. Imagine having to walk out of the Asian. Pa! Pathetic. Anyway, now you thought I forgot about the Eye of Terror. I killed the Twins of Terror, but I didn't kill the Eye of Terror yet. Unfortunately, I am currently not old. I am middle-aged, so my damage is only 98 per swing rather than 142.8, but it's fine. He enters the second phase pretty quickly. Goodbye, I have Cthulhu. Damn, I killed you late in the front of it. It doesn't matter. Ah, what the, what's all this sandstorm going on? This oh look, it's an antlion. Well, time for death. Pew, pew. So this fight is actually really it's like so much easier with Wanda. Because you have so much whip range as Wanda, you can stand at the back of the arena to make Antlion do his sand spikes somewhere else rather than right on top of you every time. So basically you have more room to move around to dodge the attacks. Also, I used the pamphlet at the start of the fight, but like it's completely unnecessary. Also, if you set up your backstep watch a little better, what you could you could backstep watch this entire fight. But now that Antlion is dead, let me just uh, show you what I mean by setting up the backstep watch. So we're gonna call this backstep watch stacking. And so what it means is basically when you activate the backstep watch it teleports you a few steps where you were before so it kind of teleports you back down your path that you just came up now when you're old the distance the backstep watch takes you is very short so you can run a short distance between two spots to effectively stack up these teleports because every time the spot changes the backstep watch remembers that and so then when you start unloading these teleports so you start using the backstep watch it will just keep teleporting you onto the same spot this is useful for killing like a dragonfly while dragonfly is spawning larvae you can run back and forth to set up your backstep watch so that you're teleporting onto the same spot rather than being teleported all over the place. So I destroyed some more goats because in this run I have not been having good luck with the vault goat horns but I think I have enough now. Anyway let's gather the stuff we need for Pearl's Island. I'm not gonna list them because I, I always forget all of them. Oh dear. Not wearing armor. Sin. Legit almost died to a bat. Can you imagine? <laughs> anyway hello Pearl. I'm here to force feed you a flower salad. Yum yum yum. Upgrade her house a little bit. Make it a nice little mansion. Plant some berry bushes. Fertilize them bad boys. Plant some flowers. Then uh, creepily way outside of her house. Then we're gonna get a nice pinch and winch blueprint because we need this uh, to do the last task for Pearl. And we need it to actually like grab the loot from the next boss that we're gonna kill soon maybe. And then I realized I don't have a lot of food so I kill some butterflies and some bees because I have to stay here for like another half day. Pearl acquired. Nice. That's all we came here for. Back into the caves because we need to find the archives and oh we found Toadstool. <laughs> Now, finding a toadstool is good and all, but then I spent like two and a half days finding the Luna Grotto biome. Oh, 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 oh. The noises I make while I'm streaming are always so questionable. Now, here I put on my weapon for a second, but then I immediately take it off. That is because it's not dangerous yet, but after you activate the archives, Great Egg Assaults will attack you if you're wearing any shadow weapons, including the alarming clock. Anyway, we activate the archive with the gem we get from deconstructing the Mooncaller's staff. Then we break that moon husk and then go grab ourselves some knowledge. Now, which one of these beef flow are mine? Let me just grab the belt. Ah, oh, there he is, my beef flow from the very start of the game. All right, we're going to use this boy to locate some of the, uh, the altar pieces. One of which is right in my base next to my saplings. And you can temporarily upgrade a backtrack watch with a purple gem. And instead of teleporting you, it opens a portal that goes to the destination. So we opened a portal to the Lunar Island so that we can easily take all of the statue pieces here. While we're here, let's mine out all of the Lunar Island altar pieces and use the B flow to put them in place. Now we teleport back home, find the second piece with the astral detector. And now we need some wood because we didn't chop down dead trees during the first part of winter to uh, gather wood with the eclops. Then we use the astral detector to find where Crab King is. He's probably over there. We move the last piece to the Lunar Island. And then we're preparing for Crab King. So he targets where you are on the boat. It's, I can outrange him, dude. Oh my goodness. Yeah, other characters can't do that. Stupid shark. Anyway, let's start the Crab King fight. Again, I'm going to explain the fight as we go. So starting the fight, you can see I used the oar to row back one step at the start of the fight. This is uh, it's will be useful for later. So his first attack is a geyser attack. He's winding up an attack, which has a really long wind up. So I get a few hits in and then I cancel the attack by freezing him. 
now he's trying to heal himself and he has summoned these claws. This is why we moved the boat back earlier so that only two claws attack our boat and not three. Also, he did try to heal himself. The only way to prevent this is to hit him multiple times in quick succession and me just attacking him isn't enough. So that's why I use a weather pane. A weather pane hits lots of the times for very little damage, but it's enough to stop him from healing. This attack looks a bit different. There was a freezing attack. So while he's winding up the attack, he tries to lower your temperature. But we have a beeflow hound, which, which prevents our temperature from dropping very fast. But we do have to step away at the last second, otherwise he will freeze us, immobilizing us. Wanda's so overpowered, dude. Damn right, Wanda's powerful. Anyway, we grab the Celestial Tribute. We're going to break the Rift Watch, jump through it, and dump it over by the Lunar Island. Now, let's lock all of these altar pieces. Nice, it worked. Whoa. So cool. And the Lunar Storms have begun. You know what that means. We're going to need some bunny slaves. I mean, not slaves. I do pay them for their labor in carrots. But I do that by stealing their houses. Hello, Wagstaff. Ah, uh, yes. I will use the Forsaken Potato to make the ass struggles. Yes. Anyway, this is all very long and boring. I have to mine some glass to get some glass. And then I have to give Wagstaff some tools. All while my bunny men are defending me. It's done. Well, hello, Badger. I nearly forgot about you. Um, could you die very quickly, please? I'm in a rush. Goodbye. And of course this storm was in the swamp, which means there was hidden tentacles all over the place, but whatever, I did it. And now, it's time to spawn in the Celestial Champion. So his first attack, he's gonna walk towards me and then begin rolling. And while he's rolling, he'll change directions two or three times. His next attack is a little pound attack. He just slams the ground around him, but we have so much range that we don't even get hit by it. Then, because we've done so much damage to him, he goes into a reclusive state where he summons a bunch of gestalts to take care of you, but you could just dodge them. And the fight repeats from there. Uh-oh. Alright, it's a phase two time. Now, because I am Wanda and I am delicate, I really 
he cannot afford to get hit by any of these guys' attacks because all of his attacks are super duper heavy. So his first attack was a spin attack, which hits you repeatedly if you get stuck in it, but you can just run away. Next, he slams the ground and summons a bunch of greater gestalts. And you can dodge this by running away, then running around in a circle around him, so that's quite easy. Next, he summons a bunch of walls. Now, these walls can damage you if you get stuck on top of them, but the main thing is they block you. You cannot walk through them. So I have to walk around to the opposite side of Celestial Champion so that I don't get stu stuck in his spinning attack. Otherwise, the fight repeats like that. Celestial Champion also does have a generic melee attack in this phase, but since I have so much range, he will never do it because I'm not standing close enough to him. Anyway, other than that, the fight keeps going as normal. We got a salamander assist in that phase, so it's, you know, it's not all on me. Got kind of hard carried by that salamander. Oh no, it's happening again! Alright, phase three. Now for Wanda, this is the most dangerous phase. Because if you slip up and don't dodge the laser attacks, he can absolutely pound you. Also, I'm here running away just to get some gear from Chester, because I need to wear the pains for this fight. So let's go. His first attack is he slams into the ground and will continuously make greater gestalts appear until you leave that blue circle on the floor. Next, he's summoning these pillars. These pillars damage you if you get hit by them when they land, and if you stay near them, they radiate a little aura of uh, sleepiness, so you get put to sleep if you stay too close to them. And that's why we're using the weather panes to get rid of these uh, to get rid of these pillars. And as you can see, I got slammed by one of Celestial Champion's laser attacks, and I immediately had to heal. That's how much damage it does even through night armor. With these laser attacks, once you have the dodge down, it's actually quite easy to dodge them because. Celestial Champion targets you with these lasers right before he fires the lasers. So if you just move just a little bit at the last second, then you'll dodge. Otherwise, that's all the moves he has for this fight. And again, he also has a melee attack, which I'm out of range of because I have such range. So he will never use it. so easy that fight is so stupid as Wanda all fights are stupid as Wanda Wanda is overpowered all right where's my crown I used 1.3 armors all right where's my gold star and pickaxe I'm getting my crown because Wanda is the queen of the constant now success crown acquired Yum. Hello, Toadstool. You're the last boss I need to kill, so we can we, can we get this fight done kind of lickety split? Now, I only made one Star Cooler staff in this run, which I turned into a Moon Cooler staff, which I then deconstructed, so I can't use those staffs for light during this fight, so I'm just gonna use a minor hat. And I'll be insane during the fight, but it's fine. I can just kill the shadow creatures. Speaking of the fight, what the heck does this boss do? Okay, so right now we have basically just two attacks. One attack, he'll throw out some boom shrooms, which do heavy damage, but they have they take forever to blow up, so you can just dodge them. The next attack is he puts a spore bomb on top of you, which explodes after a few seconds, and it leaves a, like a spore, and it leaves like a little spore field on the ground, which stales food and light bulbs, which anything perishable, it will start staling. So you'll see halfway through the fight, I end up dropping my light bulb somewhere so that they don't Spoil. And what is this? He's summoning trees? So yeah, these trees buffed uh, Toadstool's speed, the amount of boom shrooms he summons, and his armor, or aka his damage reduction. And if all of his trees are up, he gains 99% damage reduction, and that is completely unacceptable. Uh, so yeah, that's why I brought weather pains. So we smash them all with the weather pains, and uh, then we continue fighting him, and that's how the fight goes for like 10,000 years. Otherwise, this guy has 52,000 health. Skipping ahead 30 seconds, we have made it one third through the fight, and I get hit by boom shrooms because I'm stupid. You can tell you've made it a third through the fight, well, because we have a mod that tells us his health, but also he drops a shroom skin once he's uh, one third dead.
Yeah, that's right. I spent that last little bit up for a thousand percent and we are now on for the last third of the fight. <laughs> that's how long this fight is. So this fight is mostly just a uh, it's mostly just a DPS check, but also just like it just requires a lot of resources because you just need enough weapons to deal 52,000 damage. Luckily for Wanda, I just need to use Nightmare Fuel to refuel my weapon. But now Toadstool has another attack in his repertoire of attacks. So he has a pound attack, which uh, can actually hurt pretty bad, but like it has such a long wind up. Cheap trick. You can tell when he's going to when he's going to pound the ground because he does on every third boom shroom attack. Well, technically that's not true. His stomp attack has a cooldown similar to the time of three boom shroom attacks. So he usually does it on every third one. Get hacked on toadstool! Quick, grab the grab the shroom skin. Grab that. Uh, grab the figure sketch. Uh, 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 quick, uh, 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 quick, teleport back. What day is it? How far in the day are we? What is it? Day 80 with two segments left. New record. Nice. Green fun cap. Oh, we got the glow cap. New record with the, my first attempt, my first attempt with Wanda. Dude, easy game, Wanda's OP. So this was pretty fast, day 80 with two segments, but you know, I did actually do a run after this, where unfortunately, I did die. Run the clip. No! The salad mander. But after I died, I invalidated the run, so it doesn't count. But I rolled back for before when I died, then I carried on the run, and I done it, and I completed it by day 77. So I know this run can be done faster. We'll have to try again some other time without dying to a salad mander. Otherwise, go follow my Twitch, because there are new Twitch drops coming soon. Twitch drops are just so you get more skins in the game just by watching me. Or some other Don't Starve Together streamers as well. Now let's talk about Wanda's new ratings. So in my best use for every character video, I gave Wanda a survivability rating of 6 out of 10, utility 10 out of 10, and combat 9 out of 10. These ratings heavily depend on your skill level, because obviously if you're bad at managing your age, your survivability is really low, but I'm going to give her ratings for my experience with her. So for Wanda's survivability, I'm going to put her a 7 out of 10, because she effectively has infinite healing, except you just can't do it all at once. Her utility is going to stay 10 out of 10, nor the character can teleport around the map like she can, and I'm going to bump her combat up to 10 out of 10, even though her DPS is slightly lower than Wolfgang. The extra range you get from her whip is just so, so helpful. And you can also use her backstep watch to get invulnerability frames. So, Wanda's new ratings are 7, 10, and 10. In my opinion, the best character in the game. But that's just for the way I play, so you don't have to play her if you don't want to. If you didn't see my Ruins Rush guide, go check out my last video. There's also a giveaway happening on that video, not this one. So go comment on that one. But now, the next character who's gonna have a boss rush will be, drumroll, please Weber so any Weber mains please comment down below all of your tips for Weber and I will read them and then do the run and then we'll post it back here anyway this was lots of fun the next video will be the intermediate survival guide thank you for watching I shall see you in the next video